Hey, hey guys, I am here with another educational video. In this video, I'll explain how to use manual prop pitch as an airbreak and quantify how effective it is for a few different aircraft. Without further ado, let's airbreak and let the graphs overshoot. To begin, there exist two types of prop pitch airbreaks, the German airbreak and the one for the rest of the nations. The German one is more complicated to pull off, I explained how to do it in an older video, Link to it is in the top right corner of the video. The way to use the airbrake for the rest of the nations is very simple if you already use mech. All you need to do is set the prop pitch to manual control and use the recommended 100% prop pitch. And whenever you want to slow down, all you need to do is reduce the throttle to 0% and voila, you're producing a significant amount of extra drag. The reason there's extra drag produced is that when you max the prop pitch percentage, the angle of the blades changes to maximize RPM, and when you're at 0% thrall, the propeller acts like a windmill and extracts energy from the airflow to turn the engine, generating drag. Generally speaking, the higher the propeller RPM and the bigger the propeller diameter, the more drag can be created in this way. Just how much extra drag is generated by the air brake? Good question. That's where the following test comes in. For a few aircraft, I dove from 4 kilometers twice, once with 100% prop pitch and the other with a default prop pitch, and compared deceleration due to the prop by dividing the drag of the prop by the weight of the aircraft to get the deceleration in Gs. The drag is measured at 500 and 600 kilometers per hour IS. Let's start with the German air brake on the BF9 K4. The following graph shows the K4's prop deceleration with manual prop pitch as the full line and without manual prop pitch as the dashed line. The difference between manual and automatic pitch gives the additional deceleration from using manual prop pitch. In the K4's case, its air brake's effectiveness is outstanding and is far better than the vast majority of air brakes in the game, including the conventional air brakes. At 500 IS, the air brake provides over 0.5 Gs of deceleration. As a reference point, the average acceleration during takeoff is about 0.5 Gs. At 600 IS, the air brake is generating 80% of the K4's weight in drag, preventing it from accelerating much beyond 600 km per hour in a 90 degree dive. You cannot rip the K4 in a dive if you're using the prop pitch air brake. Next up is the p h The p h has a respectable air brake compared to later fighters with 0.25 Gs, but is dwarfed by the K4's air brake, especially at higher speeds. But the B21H has a high base drag with automatic prop pitch, so you're only gaining less than 0.05 Gs of extra deceleration by using manual prop pitch. Not all air brakes are created equal. F34B is next with its big prop. Should we expect it to outperform the B21H's air brake? Well, yes, but actually no. On this graph, the F-34B's air brake provides about 0.2 Gs of deceleration, lower, lower than the p hs But this result was predictable since the drag from the prop is normalized with the aircraft's weight, and the F-34B weighs much more than the p h so even though the F-34B's drag is higher than the p hs the p hs lower weight gives it a higher deceleration. On this graph, you can see a big difference in deceleration between automatic and manual prop pitch, and the F-Roof for B's air brake is quite useful in battle. I did the same test with the Typhoon, the Spitfire Mark 13, and the Jason de Leon, and all the results are on the following graph. As you can see, the German air brake blows the more conventional air brakes out of the water. The rest of the planes feature deceleration around 0.2 Gs, which is roughly the deceleration at 0% throttle with automatic prop pitch of these aircraft in this speed range. In other words, the prop pitch air brake roughly doubles your deceleration when used. That allows you to make faster changes in speed, which is useful in battle. An additional minor advantage to using manual prop pitch is that your RPM stays significantly higher than on automatic, so when you want to start acceler accelerating again, your engine is already revved up and can start producing thrust earlier, allowing for more accurate speed control. Are these numbers realistic? Putting aside the K4 for a moment, the rest of these aircraft exhibit reasonable levels of prop drag and the drag on the prop is one of the reasons why propeller-driven aircraft didn't need actual air brakes as seen on fighter jets, because the prop will start creating drag beyond a certain speed when you throttle down. Jets need air brakes since their engines still produce thrust as long as they aren't off, making it harder to decelerate in them without air brakes. 
As for the K4, it is aerodynamically possible to generate that much drag given the airspeed and prop diameter. In fact, the drag is only about one-third of what is theoretically possible, according to my quick calculations. The more worrying aspect is that at even higher speeds than what were tested here, the drag on the prop can exceed the aircraft's weight, and the prop certainly wasn't designed to withstand these loads on the regular. A brand new prop would likely withstand the first few instances of this air brake, but might, it might experience some permanent bending as a result. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something from this video, smash like for more, and see you next time.